Welcome to the Suffolk Police Department Annual Awards Banquet. Tonight we'll honor citizens and department members who have received awards in 2014. I want to welcome our special guest, Vice Mayor Leroy Bennett, Councilman Lou Ward, Councilman Mike Duman, Assistant City Manager Patrick Roberts, Media and Community Relations Director Diana Klink. In 2014, our department issued seven citizen awards, seven life-saving awards, 55 departmental commendations, and 75 noteworthy performance awards. Tonight, you'll hear some of the extraordinary actions which led to these awards. We will also recognize our first civilian employee of the year, our dispatcher of the year, our supervisor of the year, and our four police officers of the quarter and police officer of the year. Please stand for the presentation of colors and the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for the invocation and blessing by Police Chaplain Carl Lamont. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us pray. God who established the laws of nature, God who is the author of natural and law and order, we invoke your presence. We invite you to be present to celebrate with us the achievements of many who, enabled by your power and their disciplined performance, have faithfully served this city in these tumultuous days with distinction. Come bless this food, be the guest at every table and every conversation. Thank you for these moments with our leaders, with our pro police family, and with our family to share this meal. Renewed and nourished, we pledge again to work for peace, justice, and order. Amen. Please be seated. All right, so we're going to get the best part out of the way as quickly as possible and get you to the food before it gets cold. Uh, we'll start with the first three tables here, and then each table has a number on it. If you could just line up, we're going to use both sides of the um, uh, serving area. Uh, main course meal. They're going to cut up the cake, drinks over here. Enjoy your evening. As we get ready to get into the for formal portion of our evening, I'd like to take the opportunity to introduce and ask for comments from our own City of Suffolk Mayor, Ms. Linda Johnson. Good evening, everyone. The food smells delicious and the crowd looks great, and this is a wonderful evening. And it's an honor and a privilege for me to be here with you, and I want to say this from the bottom of my heart, 
to spend the evening with one of the finest law enforcement agencies in this country. And I sincerely mean that, and I think you give yourselves a round of applause. I'm joined here this evening by several members of, of council, and you know, this is one of the evenings that I think we all look forward to, because it's a chance for you all to enjoy with your families and to take the time out to be, be proud of what you do, and I know you all are, just like we are so proud of you. And I started out the way I did, because you know, these are especially trying times across the nation for those in law enforcement. Every time I turn the television on, my inclination is to turn it off. Of course, that's my inclination. Anyway, but to decide to become a police officer is no small feat. It's a selfless act that's driven by the desire to serve your community where you live and work and play. There are long hours, reams of paperwork, and many other parts of the job that you never see on that television or on a movie screen. And it's the pursuit of making the community a better place that makes it all worthwhile. And I know that's why each and every one of you get up every single morning. When you look around Suffolk, our streets, our schools, our churches, every part of our lives are owed to the work that you do every day. And because of that, our citizens go to sleep at night knowing that while they sleep, Suffolk's finest are tirelessly ensuring the safety of their streets. The partnerships that this police department has forged over the years of active work in our community is paying off in our streets and safer crime, crime is down, double-digit percentages. That's something a lot of places can't say, and it's because of each and every one of you. And our quality of life in Suffolk has never been better. You always hear me say, without feeling safe, there is no quality to life. This will truly be an evening to give recognition and thanks to those who continually strive to make this city a stronger, safer, and a proud standout among the Hampton Roads region. I was at the Valor breakfast on Friday morning, and it was just such an honor and privilege to be able to stand there and to be a part of those awards. That's just something that you just don't get a chance to do in your life, and it's something that I just truly just feel proud of. All of you, sworn officers, civilian employees, volunteers, and our engaged citizens, you know, to pull a community together, it takes both. It takes the police officers and it takes the citizens coming to you and knowing that they can trust and believe in you, and they do. And because of that, they are just such a big part of making this community work. So I want to say to you this evening that you all epitomize the very best of what I see in our society today. Sometimes we look around and we don't like everything we see in society today. But you all are what make us proud. I've said it many times that a simple thank you is not enough. So know this, every waking moment there is someone somewhere in need of your services. And they rely on the fact that you will always be there ready to assist them with your compassion, your devotion, your grace, and your dedication to that job. So enjoy yourselves this evening, pat yourselves on the back. You so deserve it. Thank you, Mary Johnson. As we go into the awards portion of the evening, whenever I call your name, please come up on my left, or my right, your left, and we'll exit out this way. Um, Lieutenant Harrison. We'll first start off with our departmental commendations for the year, Detective Alex Johnson. <clears throat> On February 8, 2014, offenders forced entry into the Metropolitan Credit Union, stealing a safe and a large amount of money. Detective Johnson was assigned to the case. He developed information regarding suspects or their whereabouts. They were also involved in other larceny investigations, but he and Detective Lurie teamed up to work the investigation. They received other investigations and identified other suspects that were connected to the primary suspects. Several interviews were conducted, however, no arrests were initially made. On March 27, 2014, someone tried to gain entry into the Northern Star Federal Credit Union ATM machine. When officers arrived, they located a bag of tools. 
During the collection of evidence, they located documents with the name that the detectives were able to investigate. Detective Lurie assumed the investigation and based upon the collection of evidence of personal interest was identified, they instantly recalled a person of interest as a primary suspect in another burglary. Lurie and Detective Johnson were teamed up to investigate this case as well, and the detectives prepared and executed a search warrant from the primary suspect. During the execution of the search warrant, burglary tools were located and the suspect was taken into custody. The detectives interviewed other suspects and were connected to the primary, and they were also charged with the breaking and entering of the credit union. Had it not been for their dedication to duty, their tenacity, these two, investigators could have or these two investigations could have easily not been solved. As a result of their dedication to duty and performance, Detective Johnson is being recognized with the departmental commendation. <laughs> Detective Shockley. On March 6, 2014, a robbery shooting occurred in the area of Lewis Avenue. As a result of the investigative efforts by Detective Shockley, a suspect was developed and a search warrant executed. During the search warrant execution, property stolen from the victim was recovered. Two additional suspects were located in the residence. One of these suspects was not only identified as an additional suspect in the robbery, but another robbery as well. Based on existing intelligence in this investigation, search warrants were obtained on three additional residences for gang participation. Officers Diggs and Linville interviewed additional suspects that was developed from the warrant. As a result of their excellent interview skills and full confession was obtained and the offenders were charged. As a result of their dedication to duty and performance, Detective Shockley is being recognized with the departmental commendation. Emergency Communications Operator Jody Holloman. <clears throat> On July 7, 2014, Emergency Communication Operator Jody Holloman received a call from a young male stating a five-year-old child had fallen into a pool in the 2500 block of Long Street Lane and was not breathing. In the background, ECO Holloman could hear a frantic female counting one, two, three, conducting chest compressions. This was later determined to be the mother. ECO Holloman continued to remain calm and ask all the questions needed for rescue response. ECO Holloman gathered the information needed and gave the mother instructions to continue the treatment for the infant. Everyone in the emergency communication center was listening in silence to the words of ECO Holloman. When ECO Holloman heard the child was crying, she reassured the mother that it would be okay. Through it all, ECO Holloman remained calm and professional and needed just a few minutes to gather herself before moving on to the next call. ECO Holloman was definitely the amazing dispatcher for the day and this call for the mother. The child was flown by Nightingale to Centera Norfolk General where he did recover and go home the following day. For her efforts and dedication, ECO Holloman is recognized with a departmental commendation. <clears throat> Detective William Shockley. On September 22, 2014, Detective Shockley was assigned as the lead detective on a murder investigation. <clears throat> During the course of the initial investigation, information was received regarding the identities of potential suspects. Detective Shockley evaluated each suspect and coordinated with the locating and interviewing of each suspect. Detective Shockley conducted interviews with each suspect, which proved very crucial in the development of the investigation. Detective Shockley conducted each separate interview, which lasted several hours with two of the three suspects. The interviews were very challenging in nature and required him to utilize sound and various techniques. Detective Shockley utilized his knowledge, training, and experience as a violent crime investigator to not only receive a full confession, but also obtain the disclosure and location of key evidence relevant to the investigation. Detective Shockley worked nearly 24 hours consecutively on this case to bring it to a successful closure with the arrest of three suspects. He then conducted numerous follow-up tasks and completed the roughly 500 pages of documents necessary for the case file. Detective Shockley demonstrated superior performance and a commitment to the Suffolk Police Department 
in the city of Suffolk and is being recognized with the departmental commendation. <laughs> Officer Gasparini. During the month of May, June, and July 2014, Officer Linville and Officer Gasparini conducted a long-term investigation into one of the downtown area's prominent criminal street gangs, the 400. The basis of this investigation was dismantling of the gang from the top down. Officer Linville and Officer Gasparini began the investigation in the late spring in regards to the recruitment of juveniles in the 400 gang by its leader. As a result of their lengthy investigation, numerous search warrants were executed on several different locations. It was discovered that the leader of the 400 had personally, or through secondary party, recruited six juveniles into the gang, and some of this activity occurred in the Suffolk High Schools. Ultimately, the primary offender and leader of the 400 gang was charged with six counts of gang recruitment, six counts of enhanced gang participation, solicitation to commit a felony, and conspiracy to commit a felony via sealed or direct indictments. A juvenile offender was also charged with gang recruitment and gang participation. This is one of the largest gang recruitment cases in the history of the neighborhood enforcement team. As a result of their dedication to duty and performance, Officer Gasparini is being recognized with a departmental commendation. <laughs> Lieutenant Troy Shelton. During a three-month span from September 15, 2014 through January 5, 2015, Lieutenant Troy Shelton became the acting captain for Sector 1 for the absence of Captain Ross. Lieutenant Shelton spent countless hours handling administrative tasks accurately and submitted information that was useful to help address various issues. He handled the problems which were passed down by the Chief's Office. Lieutenant Shelton also had to handle numerous issues which involved several shifts. He responded to several major incidents after hours, such as the Carter and Hill murders, Dete <laughs> Detective Sola DeYankin's accident, and runaway juveniles. Detect I'm sorry, Lieutenant Shelton also assisted with the Peanut Fest command for two days and managed the holiday parade. Furthermore, on December 12, 2014, there was a fatal accident in Prudent Boulevard with, without hesitation, Lieutenant got dressed, left his residence, and responded to the scene until he was relieved. Due to his responsiveness, dedication to the job, and his willingness to help out others when needed, Lieutenant Shelton is receiving a departmental commendation. <clears throat> Sergeant Cheryl Balzer. On October 18, 2014, the Suffolk dispatchers received a very traumatic 911 call where the caller heard a homicide taking place while on the phone with the victim. Out of concern for the dispatcher, Sergeant Balzer was contacted due to her being a certified CIT officer. Sergeant Balzer took time out of her day to come in and talk in great detail on the incident and to see what had been done for the dispatchers. After hearing everything, Sergeant Balzer contacted the dispatcher to reach out for support. Sergeant Balzer also came in on her day off to speak to the dispatcher prior to her going on shift. Due to her act of kindness and compassion that she has for her fellow employees, Sergeant Balzer is receiving a departmental commendation. Uh, Sergeant James Sobers. <clears throat> on November 14, 2014, Sergeant Sobers responded to a fatal accident on Route 58 at Godwin Boulevard. Upon his arrival, he quickly instructed SPO Cravey to take photographs of the scene and help preserve the evidence at the scene. Sergeant Sober strategically positioned all other officers in certain positions to prevent vehicles from coming into the crash site. Because of the quick response and willingness of all involved during this incident, they were able to get traffic moving by 6.30 in the morning and completely clearing up an opening of the roadway by 9.30. Being the first on-scene supervisor, Sergeant Sobers stands out for his quick response and decisive actions in the deployment of personnel and resources. Sergeant Sobers was able to remain calm, professional, and give clear direction at the scene. As a result of his dedication to duty and performance, Sergeant Sobers is being recognized with a departmental commendation. <clears throat> Senior Police Officer Andrew Finneman.
From September 15, 2014 through November 1, 2014, SPO Finneman was temporarily assigned to Sector 2 B Squad as an acting sergeant. SPO Finneman handled all immediate supervisory responsibilities to include working various types of complaints from citizens. As an approach to these complaints, he directed his officers to patrol reported areas, contacted other city departments requesting signage, and prepared detailed progress and completion reports. Captain Bowie indicated that during Finneman's tenure as an acting sergeant, he, Captain Bowie, did not have to second guess or go behind Finneman to see if the job was done right. As a result of his dedication to duty and performance, Officer Finneman is being recognized with a departmental commendation. <laughs> Ms. Cynthia Myers. During the fourth quarter of 2014, Ms. Cynthia Meyer has transcribed multiple statements for 19 internal affairs investigations, in addition to her duties of transcribing criminal investigative statements. Not only was Ms. Meyer able to manage the exceedingly high workload, but she was able to complete all transcriptions with incredible speed without sacrificing accuracy. Ms. Meyer maintained a positive attitude, demonstrated exceptional dedication and work ethic. Ms. Meyer not only maintained her own deadlines, but was instrumental in ensuring the Internal Affairs Section and the Criminal Investigation Division maintained their deadlines. As a result of her dedication to duty and performance, Ms. Meyer is being recognized with a departmental commendation. <laughs> ECO Jody Holloman. Jody Holloman was nominated by her co-workers to receive an award for her dedication and performance during 2014. They cited that over the past year she had shown great determination in keeping up the morale in the communication center behind the radio and the phones. She has created multiple contests during different seasons and holidays to allow everyone to participate in something fun together. She developed an activity for all dispatchers to get to know each other and their families a little better. She has initiated ways for the center to be able to highlight moments such as outstanding work on calls to their funniest calls. ECO Holloman also keeps a snack and drink stand stacked and running so the dispatchers have fair price snacks and also raise money for the Emergency Communications Helping Others Fund. This fund buys lotions and Kleenex for nursing home patients and food for needy families during the holidays. Her fellow co-workers say that she is always willing to assist and is very dedicated to our communication center and citizens. As a result of her dedication to duty and performance, ECO Holloman is being recognized with a departmental commendation. <laughs> Captain Janet Bransassi. Then Lieutenant, now Captain Janet Bransassi, served on the awards committee from 2011 through 2014. During that time, she saw the awards program policy was woefully outdated. She took the policy and while seeking input from a variety of people, <clears throat> revised it into a much more workable policy. In the awards committee meetings, Lieutenant Bransassi always helped members keep focus and fairness on recognition of those nominated for awards so that the end product would withstand the test of time. While she was sometimes on the short end of a vote, which happens to all committee members, she was professional and displayed her understandings for other thoughts. But Lieutenant Bransassi's work did not end with meetings. She helped craft the write-ups for the certificates and many times did that with little assistance. She was also the coordinator and development of the awards banquet, which we're here tonight, which showcased the award recipients. This involved many hours of planning and setup on the day of the event. When Lieutenant Bransassi was promoted to captain, she left the committee, but her influence will remain. For her work on the awards committee, she is recognized with a departmental commendation. Yeah. So she'll stay and be joined by Lieutenant Harrison and Detective Thompson.
In early 2014, Chief Bennett asked then Lieutenant Bransassi, or tasked then Lieutenant Bransassi with the development of a departmental yearbook. It had been nearly 10 years since a book had been developed to record our departmental members, sections, and history. A committee of members from all sections of the department was developed and chaired by Lieutenant Bransassi. The tasks were distributed to all members of the committee and a publishing company was secured. One of the initiatives of the committee was to solicit sponsors for the book to help supplement the cost. Additionally, numerous photographs of our staff, formal and informal, was taken to provide a photographic record of our department. In January 2015, a very bright, colorful, and brilliant book was published and distributed to each and every member of the department at no cost. As a result of their dedication to duty and the exemplary performance in the development of this permanent record of our department, these personnel are being recognized with a departmental commendation. Miss Abigail Abound and Mr. Julian Torres. On June 7, 2014, while attending a charity five-kilometer running event at Constance Wharf, a young lady jumped into the Nazman River in an attempt to take her own life. After seeing these actions and realizing that the young lady was obviously in danger, Mr. Bound and Mr. Torres jumped into the water to help her. They were able to get her to the dock and safely out of the water. If not for their quick thinking and heroic efforts, the charity event would have ended in tragedy. For these reasons, Ms. Abound and Mr. Torres are awarded the Suffolk Police Department Citizen Award. Ms. <laughs> Shamika Council, Ms. Barbara Gale, Mr. Chip Joyner, Mr. James Arrington Sr. The Suffolk Police Department School, Office, School Resource Officer Unit, in conjunction with the Suffolk Department of Fire and Rescue and Suffolk Public Schools, annually hosts a mock DUI crash demonstration at Kings Fork High School. The demonstration is conducted at the school's junior and senior prom time is intended to educate them on the perils and consequences of driving under the influence. The fire and police emergency crews demonstrate the dramatic reenactment of driving under the influence. This event would not be con a continued success without the support and partnership by Shamika Council, Barbara Gale of Kings Fork High School, Chip Joyner, owner of Chip's Towing, and James Arrington of Crocker Funeral Home. Their outstanding commitment go well be of, above and beyond the extended to their services to the work the event is invaluable. Blah. Their commitment showcases the dynamic government and business coming together for the good of the community. Their dedication, time, and sacrifice, they have been awarded the Suffolk Police Department Citizen Award. That's a whole lot of good stuff to try to get out there, so sometimes we fumble. So at this point, we go into our life-saving awards. Officer Ashley Allen. <clears throat> On February 8, 2014, Officer Ashley Allen was at home when a neighbor came to her door, frantically requesting her assistance. Her neighbor was reporting that her husband was attempting to commit suicide in their closet. 
Officer Allen responded to the apartment where she found the neighbor face down with a broken tie hanging on the rod and the other part tightly tied around his neck. He was warm to the touch but unresponsive and not breathing. Officer Allen immediately cut the tie from around his neck and rolled him over. Once she rolled him over, he gasped for a breath and began breathing again. The swift actions of Officer Allen helped save her neighbor's life. As a result of her actions, Officer Allen is being recognized with the department's life-saving award. <laughs> Officer William Bradshaw. On January 5, 2014, Officer Bradshaw responded to 105 Hammer Road for a 38-year-old female that was unresponsive and not breathing. Upon arrival, he initiated CPR. During a sweep of her mouth, he removed a large amount of chewing gum. Officer Bradshaw continued with rescue breaths and the patient gasped for air. When the patient gasped for air, Officer Bradshaw was able to remove more gum from her mouth. At this time, she began breathing on her own. The patient was transported to OBC Hospital by medics, and she was alert and conscious. As a result of his actions, Officer Bradshaw is being recognized with the department's life-saving award. Officer Samantha Blake. On April 12, 2014, Officer, Officer Samantha Blake was dispatched to the 100 block of Nora Lane in reference to a cardiac arrest. Upon arrival, Officer Blake was advised that a 70-year-old male was unresponsive. Officer Blake checked for a pulse and found none, but observed the man was still warm to the touch. She began chest compressions followed by rescue breaths. After three sets of compressions and breath, the man began breathing deeply. At that time, EMS arrived and transported the man to Centera Obesey Hospital. It was later reported that the man's condition had improved greatly. For Officer Blake's quick action and devotion to duty, she is being recognized with the department's life-saving award. Officer Lamont Greer. <clears throat> On October 31st, 2014, Officer Greer was dispatched to 106 Penner Street, the Red Barn, in reference to a male subject having a medical condition. Upon Officer Greer's arrival, he observed that the male subject was lying on his back on the ground with his cell phone in his hand. Officer Greer noticed that the male subject had shallow breathing and was unresponsive and then the few seconds later that he stopped breathing. Officer Greer advised Suffolk dispatch as he started chest compressions. The male subject began to breathe again as EMS arrived and was later transported to the hospital. The physician advised that without the immediate life-saving actions of Officer Greer, the man would have died, but instead he fully recovered from the incident. For his efforts, Officer Greer is being recognized with the department's life-saving award. Officer Shane Sukawaski and Officer Daniel Nesbitt. On July 14, 2014, Officer Sukawaski and Officer Nesbitt were dispatched to 103 Linden Avenue in reference to Mr. Ian Masculine going into cardiac arrest. Upon arrival, the officers discovered that the gentleman was not breathing and he did not have a pulse. Officer Nesbitt started providing chest compressions while Officer Sukawaski was attaching the AED leads. After being shocked and several CPR compressions, the gentleman began to breathe unassisted. EMS arrived on the scene, stabilized and transported the victim to the hospital, where he made a full recovery. 
If it was not for both Officer Sukawaski and Officer Nesbitt's quick response in providing the proper medical treatment, the victim would have possibly died that day. Officer Sukawaski and Officer Nesbitt are being awarded with the department's life-saving award. ECO Robert Shelton. ECO Shelton joined the Suffolk Police Communications Department on September 2nd, 2014 and became certified through our EMD program with ProQA. On November 26, 2014, ECO Shelton received a 911 call from 1405 Falcon Street, wherein the caller stated that a female was choking. The caller advised ECO Shelton that the victim's lips were turning blue. ECO Shelton began providing instructions to the caller through the ProQA to help dislodge the food. The subject became unconscious, and ECO Shelton provided instructions to the caller on how to perform chest compressions. During the process, the obstruction was cleared, and the victim began to breathe and talk. ECO Shelton remained on the phone comforting the caller until help arrived on scene. Due to ECO Shelton being able to keep the caller calm and provide clear instructions, he was able to save the female's life. ECO Shelton is being awarded with the department's life-saving award. And now our 2014 of the year recipients. For our first ever civilian of the year, Miss Amanda Marine. Throughout 2014, Amanda Marine consistently delivers the highest degree of service possible to not only the command staff, but the entire department. Amanda is very involved in many departmental functions outside of her primary duties and responsibilities. She coordinates the police versus fire flag football game, three and up. <laughs> Championed various United Way and Relay for Life fundraisers, manages the city's annual golf tournament, and actively assists in the coordination of obtaining and distributing Christmas gifts to needy families. Amanda does her job con constantly maintaining a high and positive attitude while managing a high volume workload. Tonight, Amanda Marine is being honored as the 2014 Suffolk Police Department's Civilian of the Year. Our Emergency Communications Operator of the Year, ECO Rachel Gale. Rachel Gale has been chosen as the 2014 Emergency Communications Operator of the Year. This honor was awarded to her in part for her work that she performs on a daily basis and also because of the quality of that her nominations that came in from her co-workers. ECO Gale has 21 years of experience with our dispatch center in the city of Suffolk. During this time, she has obtained certifications as a communications training operator, emergency medical dispatcher, crisis intervention trainer, VSIN instructor, and numerous other certifications. ECO Gale has taken on several other duties, such as the reverse 911 administrator, and she is assisting in getting the Communication Center its CALEA certification. As the reverse 911 administrator, she continually updates and maintains the system as well as is a, is a departmental liaison for any new upgrades or training that come available to the system. With CALEA, she constantly does research on the standards and assists in writing our SOPs. Ms. Gale is an acting supervisor for her squad when the supervisor is off in addition to performing her assigned work duties. 
She is well respected by everyone that she works with, is both a leader and a fellow emergency communications operator. Her coworkers indicate that she is always willing to share her knowledge and experience and assist in any way that she can. She has a great disposition and will go above and beyond helping other coworkers. Ms. Gale is a positive role model that new communication operators try to emulate. She is dependable and will come in on short notice if a dispatcher is needed for any incident. When dispatching police, fire, or EMS calls, she's always clear and concise, better than I am, in maintaining a professional demeanor at all times. When taking emergency calls from citizens, she is direct in gathering the appropriate information needed and also remains compassionate, even with the most stressful calls. She is efficient and thorough and ensures a well-run dispatch center. ECO Gale is dedicated to our communication center, city, and citizens. She works hard and it shows in her daily work. She comes up with new ideas and innovative ideas that we now use in our center. Tonight, Rachel Gale is being honored as the 2014 Emergency Communications Operator of the Year. I'm looking at my major because he made a claim earlier, but I'm not crying. The Supervisor of the Year, Captain Janet Bransassi. At the beginning of 2014, Janet Bransassi was assigned as a lieutenant in charge of the Special Investigations Unit in the Criminal Investigation Division. SIU is a section of the department that handles many cases that require sensitivity, initiative, positive attitudes, and community quality of life initiatives. Lieutenant Bransassi consistently balanced all the desires of her personnel and the needs of the department and the community. For example, when it was determined that illegal alcohol sales in houses were found directly related to several homicides in 2013, Lieutenant Bransassi directed her staff to work closely with the departmental assets as well as outside agencies in curbing the sale of illegal alcohol through nip joints. In doing so, numerous arrests were made and there were no homicides in 2014 that were found to have any connection to illegal alcohol violations. In SIU, there are usually high risks associated with all the search warrants, controlled buys, and enforcement activities. Lieutenant Bransassi continually weighed the safety risk to her personnel and the community versus the mission. She did this through careful analysis of the investigation and consultation with higher command or SWAT representatives. The decisions she consistently made reflect the integrity of herself and the department and her concern for her personnel safety. Being in charge of SIU, she directed her investigators to quickly assist other units, such as NET, criminal investigations, or SWAT in their operations. She also ensured that her unit assisted with National Night Out and Peanut Fest. Lieutenant Bransassi had the responsibility of maintaining accountability and accuracy of confidential funds and asset forfeiture documentation. These responsibilities are highly visible and auditable to the smallest detail. Errors in this area often lead to the public losing trust in the honesty and integrity of an entire department. Her accounting accuracy was flawless. While doing her primary job, she often volunteered for others, such as chairing the yearbook committee. In September 2014, Lieutenant Bransassi was promoted to the rank of captain and now serves as the commander of the Criminal Investigation Division. Tonight, Captain Janet Bransassi is being honored as the 2014 Suffolk Police Department Supervisor of the Year. <clears throat> now we go through our Officer of the Quarter, which the four officers of the quarter who come up here tonight, one of which is identified as the Officer of the Year. So our officer of the first quarter is Officer Matthew Fabian. He got stuck on a call. And our officer of the second quarter is Officer Shane Sukowski. On June 8, 2014, Field Training Officer Shane Sukowski and his trainee, 
officer responded to a call in which a man with a gun was chasing a female and shooting at her. As they traveled to the scene, they were notified by the dispatcher that the armed subject was now in a car driving in the area. Officer Sukowski noticed the vehicle and coordinated a felony traffic stop. Instead of following the officer's commands, the subject exited the vehicle and walked toward the police car. Officer Sukowski quickly assumed that the man was not armed and was able to force the man to the ground using only the necessary force to take him into custody. The suspect was charged with several serious felonies in relation to shooting at a female. Officer Sukowski's quick actions ended in a great arrest without deadly force. On another traffic stop, Officer Sukowski observed a bag of drugs under the foot of a passenger in the vehicle. Subsequent search revealed packs of crack cocaine and cash. Officer Sukowski was able to obtain confessions from two separate subjects and both were charged with drug offenses. Officer Sukowski's attention to detail are exhibited by his excellent police work. Officer Sukowski has been tasked with the training of two new officers during this quarter. He has worked hard to expose the officers to a variety of situa situations like traffic stops resulting in drug arrests and driving under the influence arrests. Officer Sukowski sets high standards for his trainees and requires paperwork and case reports to be flawless. He recently required his trainee to complete three case files in one day and they were all done, air free. Officer Sukowski's distinguished accomplishments during this quarter and his demonstrated commitment to duty is recognized by naming him the police officer of the second quarter. Officer of the third quarter is Officer Ashley Allen. Officer Ashley Allen distinguished herself by superior performance during the third quarter of 2014 by virtue of her outstanding leadership and exemplary job performance. She embraces the tenets of being a patrol officer. She knows the citizens, cranial elements, and makes her presence known as she patrols daily. She made 37 arrests which led, to the, which led the department during this quarter. She investigated and reported 67 incident-based reports which placed her in the top five for the department. Officer Ashley Allen seeks to expand her knowledge and investigative skills at every opportunity. She demonstrated exceptional tenacity and leadership while taking lead investigator role on a residential breaking and entering. Due to the seriousness and complexity of the fence, these types of cases are normally reserved for the detective bureau to investigate. She obtained statements, directed a show up, which led to the positive identification of the offender and then she coordinated the processing of the crime scene to gather the evidence. Upon completion, she charged the offender with breaking and entering and petty larceny. Officer Allen is a st stellar role model for our city and the department. Her display of empathy was remarked by a citizen to the news media while she was visiting a fellow officer at the hospital and took the time to talk and play with the citizen's three-year-old granddaughter. She got down on the floor at the child's level and played with her to put the child at ease. Despite being with the department for just over two years, her distinguished accomplishments for the third quarter demonstrate her commitment to the department and our city. Her outstanding leadership and performance were clearly above and beyond and reflect highly upon herself, the department, and the city of Suffolk, which has earned her the recognition of officer of the third quarter for 2014. Our officer of the fourth quarter is Officer Michael Wingate. In the words of his supervisor, Officer Michael Wingate has distinguished himself by exemplary job performance. Despite being a new officer, which he has progressed very quickly within the Suffolk Police Department, Officer Wingate is one of the top performers in his squad, issuing 63 summonses, making 18 arrests, completing 57 IBRs, and entering 26 field contacts. Additionally, on October 17, 2014, 
he responded to a residence in reference to a loud music. Upon his arrival, he could smell the strong odor of marijuana coming from the residence. He secured the residence and requested a search warrant. Once the warrant was served and the residence was searched, Officer Wingate found 82 grams of powder cocaine, 12.2 grams of crack cocaine, 13 grams of marijuana, and $2,900 in U.S. currency, which was seized from the residence. Also, on December 13, 2014, Officer Wingate responded to an assault. While inside the residence, Officer Wingate was able to recognize several items that were stolen from several local burglaries, and those items were later returned to rightful owners. The efforts of Officer Wingate are not only a reflection to his dedication and service of the Suffolk Police Department, but of the community he serves. Tonight, Officer Wingate is being awarded as Officer of the Fourth Quarter for 2014. And, as most of us all know, our Officer of the Year for 2014 is Officer Shane Sukowaski. While I'm very proud of all of our personnel, I'm especially uh, proud to recognize the accomplishments of our award uh, recipients tonight. Each of you have demonstrated a significant commitment to your duty, to serving and protecting, and to making our community uh, a safe and proud community. I'm very thankful for all of the dedicated professionals within our police department who serve the citizens of the city of Suffolk. You have my appreciation, my respect, my admiration for what you do day in and day out. I'm, ext I'm extremely proud to be your chief and I again congratulate each one of you for what you all have accomplished. Congratulations. <laughs> In closing, I want to take just a second and recognize uh, Captain Brand Sassy, who headed up tonight's event, and uh, a bunch of staff members that helped him. I want to thank Montero's. That was pretty good food for uh, a lot better than rubber chicken, wasn't it? And uh, I, I want to say something, even though she's not here. Uh, about our city manager for many, many years, six years already I've been here. Uh, she has always been a big supporter of the police department, as our council has too, but especially the city manager. Uh, she's always been in our corner. She's always try, tried to provide us what we needed, and everybody in this room knows how much equipment and different types of stuff we've gotten over the years to help us with our job. So I want to recognize her and wish her the very best. And now I'm going to ask for Reverend Lamont to come up and give us our benediction. Let's pray. We thank you, O oh God, for your presence. And now, O oh God, set your blessing upon us all, but especially on those who have been awarded for their faithful service and professionalism. We ask your blessing upon all these brave men and women who each day risk their lives, who must minute by minute deal with incredible demands with character and integrity. Bless, keep, and protect not only our Suffolk police family, but our personal families, especially our young, tender children. We pray also for first responders everywhere. 
We especially think of those, our brothers and sisters in Baltimore, who stand for peace and justice. And again, we pray for the people of Suffolk that they might clearly see the mission of our police family is one and the same with their family's hopes and dreams. Simply, we say, God help us. Amen. Thank you, Thank you all for coming.